Hey guys, welcome back to Bernard from the BTN HD, and today we're dealing with Citrix, Citrix Zen app. Now, I haven't touched Zen app for several, several years, and I had a client that had some issues with their uh, Zen app farm, and I needed to build something real quick. So today's video is all about building a dirty lab uh, for Citrix Zen app. So that's what I had to build. I had to get myself up and running with a Zen app uh, infrastructure so I could test something out and uh, you know push out the end result so it can start working for the client. Uh, a dirty lab consists of not a lot of servers. Zenapp consists of like an active directory, a delivery controller, uh, a storefront. Uh, it consists of a lot of things. So I'm consolidating everything into two machines. So right now I have my bj-ad which is my active directory and I have bj-citrix. Now within my dirty lab what I did was I installed everything such as the delivery controller, the storefront, uh, the Citrix Studio, everything inside this box. I was trying to do everything inside the Active Directory, but apparently you cannot install uh, the delivery controller within Active Directory. I learned that the hard way. So what I have right now, I'm using everything as Windows Server 2012 R2. Uh, as you can see, I have BJ-Citrix, which is this machine right here. I'm going to right click on the start, uh, go to System, and it's part of the Active Directory. Awesome. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to mount the ISO of the Citrix. So you can get yourself a copy at uh, Citrix.com. You log in an account. If you don't have an account, just create one. It's free. And you can download the, the you know, the 30 or 90 day uh, trial period one. So I'm going to go into the downloads and I'm going to mount this up and I'm going to press OK. Awesome. So the first thing that I'm going to install inside this server is I'm going to install the direct controller. So let's uh, actually start this up and we're going to run the auto select. Okay, so you're going to get a nice little dialog box. Uh, you can either pick the Zen app or the Zen desktop. I'm actually doing the Zen app for now. Uh, so let's click on start. You're going to get another dialog box. Uh, you're going to get the option of delivery controller. Uh, Citrix Director, Citrix License Server, Citrix Storefront, Citrix Studio, and all that other good stuff. Now, if you're trying to install this within your Active Directory, which I did in the past, this option right here, it's going to be grayed out. So let's uh, install Delivery Controller for first. You're going to get the Software License Agreement. Just accept it or read it if you want. If you have time, you can read it. Uh, click on Next. From here, it's really up to you. I'm looking at my notes again. Uh, you can actually install everything in one shot, uh, but best practice, I think the studio and the director are going to be installed in a different machine. The directory controller, the delivery controller is going to be installed somewhere else. The license server, uh, I've read that the license server would be best if you install it inside the active directory, but I'm actually going to install all this in one shot. So let's click on next. Uh, if you don't have a SQL Server installed on the local machine or you do have SQL Server installed somewhere else, we could try to locate it. But for now, I don't have a database. So I'm going to install the 2012 SP2 Express. And it's going to actually install Windows Remote Assistant. So we're going to click on Next on that. Now, these are all the TCP ports that are going to be open. Now, the delivery controller has to have 80 TCP and 443, which is the HTTP as well as HTTPS. The director also uses 80 and 443. The license server uses a bunch of them. I normally picked on my dirty lab was automatically. We're going to click on next. Right now, you got a nice little review of what needs to be installed. All this stuff right here, the Zen app installation is going to install it for you. So that's awesome. You don't have to travel online and try to find these files. And we're going to click on install. But before I do that, let's go all to the bottom and look at the firewall section. Make sure that you have these ports open. Most likely you have a firewall inside your infrastructure that controls all your TCP ports, your incoming and your outgoing. Just make sure these are enabled so your machines on your floor are able to talk to your Zen app. And we're going to click on install. All right, guys. So the installation is completed. Everything is successful. Awesome. It took a little longer than 12 minutes. From here, I'm going to leave Launch Studio checked off uh, because I want it to launch up because I need to do a little configuration. Again, this is a dirty setup. Uh, it's not really best practice. I just needed to be up and running to do a couple of things. We're going to click on finish. Okay, so once Citrus Studio is up and running, you're going to see automatically that you're going to have your Citrus Studio and as well as your Citrus Forefront. Uh, again, this is a dirty, dirty lab, and best practice is that you don't want to have your Citrix storefront on the same server as your studio and your director stuff. 
uh, but again I just need to get it up and running so the first thing that I did was to get this machine or this infrastructure ready was I went inside the delivery applications and desktops to users because I had to build it into the point that uh, it kind of replicated my client's infrastructure so I'm gonna click on that uh, from here you want to do a full configured production ready site this is recommended for new users and let's give it a site name so I'm gonna give it a BTN HD and we're gonna click on next this is gonna create and set up a database for studio uh, again, this is fresh. I've never done a uh, database before. From here, it also gives you an option to specify an additional delivery controller for this site. Uh, I only have one, which is the one that we just you know installed. So that's awesome. But if you have additional ones, you just click on add and just uh, enter the DNS name and just click OK and add it. Uh, we're going to click on next here. OK, because my license server address is local, Everything. Remember, I installed the license server locally. You can even click on connect to verify it, and you should get that little green lock. If not, uh, you got you to gotta reinstall the license server. I'm going to use the 30-day trial for now, but if you have an existing license, you could just add it right here, or you could browse for the license file. Again, this is my dirty lab, my testing lab, so I'm doing a 30-day trial for now. So let's click on next. Uh, the connection type, I am doing a GNOME machine management. So from here, I'm just going to click on next. Uh, do you want to add at V publishing server to this deployment? The client that I was dealing with does not have at V, which is application virtualization, which is great, but we're not doing it now for this series. So let's click on next. You get a nice little summary of what's going to happen. And we're going to click on finish and it's going to start installing uh, or generating the database for you, uh, which is awesome. All right. So once the site setup is configured, it's going to automatically take you to this. He's going to give you a nice little green check mark. That's awesome. If you want, you can also test the site configuration. The process takes a little bit, but once the test site configuration passes, that basically means that you're good to go. The next thing that I configured was the storefront. So let's get inside the Citrix storefront. And within here, it's going to connect to it. OK, so once you're inside your storefront, you don't have a store. So the first thing that you need to do is create one. So let's click on create a store. From here, give your store name. So I'm going to give it uh, BJ Tech News HD and click next. Uh, delivery controller is not going to automatically pick one. It'd be nice if Citrix added that feature that it roams around your network and pick it, but it doesn't. So let's click on add. From here, you want to pick what type is it. So it's going to be a Zen app 7.5 or later or a Zen desktop. Awesome. The controller display name. You could change this. I'm going to leave it as the default. So let's click on add. Now the server name. Best practice is not IP address. So make sure you use the DNS. Again, I'm trying to replicate it the way that my client had it. So let's go. I think that's how I had it. And there it goes. So let's click OK. Awesome. And we're going to click OK. We're going to click on Next. Uh, we're not going to do any remote access for now. And click on Create. All right, so creating our storefront is completed. At the very end, it gives you a nice little summary. You could use email address for your account directory or your website created. This is the link that we're going to be using. Awesome, awesome. So let me click on that and uh, it should launch automatically the site, which is awesome. That means our storefront is completed. Again, guys, I'm just showing you how to get yourself up and running as quickly as possible. I'm not going to get into it too in depth with this uh, Zen app stuff. Later on, I am, and uh, it's going to want you to install the Citrix receiver, which is awesome. So I'm going to close that up and we're going to click on finish. And our storefront should automatically have all that good stuff underneath. Awesome. Now, the next thing that I did with my dirty lab was I installed the, I'm looking at my notes, all right? I, I installed the virtual delivery agent within this uh, virtual machine. Uh, so I'm going to minimize this. Actually, I'm going to close this. Let's close it. And we're going to go inside our uh, DVD drive. And we're going to rerun our uh, software. We're going to run the Zen app and Zen desktop application. And I want to install the virtual desktop agent on this machine. Again, it's not best practice. It's just something that I need to get up and running so I could do a couple of uh, troubleshooting for this client. So let's click on that. From here, it's really up to you or what you want. Uh, what I did was create a master image. So I clicked on next. Uh, the virtual delivery agent is required. Six receiver wasn't installed. Remember the site when we created, when we went to the site, it wanted me to install the Citrix receiver. 
but now that I'm installing it and I go to the site, it's going to automatically go through. So we're going to click on next. Uh, how do you want to enter the location of your delivery control? You could do it manually or you could just choose from the location of Active Directory, let the machine creation service do it automatically or do it later. Uh, I think I picked on my notes was do it manually and I'm going to just add it here. Uh, there it goes. Make sure that you give it the full uh, domain qualifier name. You could test it. If it's green, you're good to go. We're going to add it. And then we're going to click on next. I left all the default. Make sure you have all the defaults enabled. I didn't check anything off because most likely in the future, I'm going to be doing Citrix at V for you guys. So that's awesome. So we're going to click on next. These are the TCP as well as the UDP ports that are going to be enabled. So make sure that your firewall within your infrastructure is configured correctly for these ports to talk to your clients as well as uh, your Citrix server. Uh, so we're going to click on next. But before I do that, I'm going to leave it as automatically. You could change it to up to you. But for this dirty lab, I just left everything as automatic. So let's click on next. Uh, it's going to give you a nice little summary. Plus, it's going to require a restart. So let's click next. All right, guys. So the our VDA, which is our virtual delivery agent, has fully installed with no problem successfully. Awesome. That's always a great thing. Uh, I need to restart the virtual machine. Uh, but other than that, guys, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Again, setting up a dirty lab will get you guys up and running as quick as possible. I'm not going to get really in depth of uh, pushing out or creating uh, apps to your users because again, that's just going to take longer. Uh, but in future videos, I'm definitely doing that. I'm going to show you guys best practice of how to build your stuff the way you're supposed to do it. I'm into the point of building uh, all the virtual machines and just stay tuned for that. Leave comments right below if you guys want me to push out these videos because I'm getting into it a lot more and you're going to be seeing a lot of Citrix stuff uh, from me. Uh, don't forget about hitting that like button and I catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.